Most people recognize the, no the name trusteer as, you know, from the banking world, almost every bank in the world uses this technology and it's been the only one who has been capable of detecting advanced malware. But trusteer has a new product that is for desktop called Apex, and this is for corporate desktops. Let me first describe what the product is and then why it, it, it's so useful. Well, first of all, this product gets the server deployed on the cloud, so there's no server to install on premises at all. And you set it up uh, first in monitor mode to know the behavior of your customers. But in the end, you configure it and you actually set the client and that gets actually sent to the corporate desktops. Uh, it, this is a Windows and Mac, but basically, you know, it focuses on Windows. And again, it is a solution for desktop. We have a, a, a trustier solution for mobile as well, but this is not what we're going to be talking about in this uh, in this video. So it, it gets install in the in the that client when you set it up gets installed on the desktop by basically two mechanisms one can be the standard software distribution that every corporation has but another one can be just a javascript we call it uh, detection snippet and we actually put this uh, detection snippet into any uh, landing page of the corporate like VPN when people enter uh, Citrix ISAM any place that when the user comes in the detection snippet detects basically that the uh, Apex is not installed on the client uh, basically it invites a client to get in and you can actually set it up to say well unless you have this you are not going to be able to log in. And what it is, is uh, is a kernel extension that is capable of intercepting any API calls from any, uh, well, any application, but we're going to be f show you the ones that we focus in. And it also has a very interesting keyboard driver so it replaced the standard keyboard driver on the machine to do uh, uh, credentials protection and I'll go into that in more detail so that's what the product basically is now why is this important what are the alternatives that we have to fight fraud in corporate desktops well the first one has been there forever is application blacklisting also known as antivirus. Basically, I'm going to detect uh, all the malware by virtue of their signature, and I'm going to prevent those from running. Well, we know, in, we know that that is definitely not enough in, in today's world. Not that you should not have one, but there are very many things that bypass uh, antivirus easily. The other thing that uh, people are trying to do, have been trying to do for a while, and there are some products on the market that try to do this, is actually application-wide listing, meaning I only gonna need, I, got on, uh, I only gonna let some applications to run, the ones that I know about, i.e., and everything else I'm gonna block it. Well, first of all, that has proven to be very difficult to, to uh, deploy and maintain. It's impossible to manage uh, unless you have like a like a retail space that you know everything is pretty much the same uh, you cannot manage that in a corporate environment where everybody has different things but most importantly it is not very effective with today's uh, attacks so in memory attacks uh, and I'm gonna show this as one of the demos that follows we're gonna show like a malware that actually creates an instance of IE looks like IE you know, walks like ID, smells like ID, but it's not IE. It's actually a malware that is running. So while listing is going to completely uh, miss that and let it run. Another thing that some companies are experimenting with is what what is called micro VM, micro virtual machines, or 
we also seen those by task isolation which basically oh, I'm gonna get these uh, browsers to run only on a on a virtual machine so I, I, I explode uh, I let the bomb explode within the VM so it won't be able to compromise uh, the rest of the environment what's the problem with that and many people are finding that this is very complex to deploy and manage it only support few a few platforms and with limited you know uh, results and in many cases that ties isolation gets in the way of what people wants to do so it's not very, find very productive what trustier apex bring is the same concept that has been so successful in the in the trustier rapport product for banks is stateful application control what what is it that what what do I mean by this if you are looking at a any application, i.e. I, I, a job application, uh, Microsoft Office, you know, there are some states that the application uh, can go to. Some things that, you know, when I'm here, I do file, save, I do uh, print, I do uh, click, right click, left click, you know, some, 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 some type of thing. So what are the type of bad things that can really happen? The number of things that that are bad that can happen it's really infinite and, and and you know hackers keep on finding new zero days vulnerabilities new really ways of really doing bad things what trustee does is that it, it, it clearly realized that the number of valid states that an application can actually go it's very finite you may think that it's too big actually it is not that big and we, we managed that we managed that and and we define when we let a job application run or, or a browser application run or, or an office application run or a, or a uh, Acrobat Reader or Flash, whatever, we know the things that it can do. You, we know that, you know, you open the application, you go here, at this point you can do a file system, right? Uh, you know, but uh, if you go to this, any state or any, if you try to launch a keylogger, for example, we're going to block that. If you try to do some sort of communication with the outside, uh, we're going to block that. It's very actually very good on the on preventing data out when it's not supposed to be actually going out. If you're going to be sending to a print uh, queue, then that's valid. But if you're going to be sending it to you know another site that is not part of what the, the things that that particular application does, uh, we actually going to block it. And we block it because we have a kernel extension, as we said before that can actually block that and they and and also that key key uh keyboard driver is, is going to be very effective on protecting corporate applications so let me make, be, be clear to say that trustier apex does not identify all the possible attacks that's the antivirus type of scheme and that's impossible that, that's a never-ending uh, change. I mean, the minute that, you know, it's like when, when the police deploys in neighborhood A and then all the bad guys move to neighborhood B and, you know, it, it, you don't have enough police to, to put them in every in every corner. So, but what we identify is really the valid state that the application can actually do. And we do this with virtually zero, po zero false positive. It's extremely uh, effective. We look at the, at the call stack and that, therefore we, we know where the application is at every time. So we focus on Java, which people joke that stands by just another vulnerability announcement, uh, with Adobe, both the reader and Flash. So we, we identify all those valid states, Office application, uh, and the major browsers, i.e. Firefox and Chrome. Uh, we also do address space uh, uh, layout randomization and, and we have very very sophisticated uh, Java control so we know the, the Java and how it works and and that's why we have been able to be so effective in in stopping things like zoos and, and spy eye and all those viruses and variations of them more players uh, are gonna be coming soon so and why this is important well today's malware those things like instantiating a copy of 
a trusted app, as we said before, zombie applications, and it runs on the system undetected, and creeps portion of the payload to avoid detection. Well, we may not see what's in the payload, but we know that you are not supposed to send at this state communication out, so we block it. Uh, those sophisticated command and control, no, no, no longer they do uh, chatting, but they, for example, send a spreadsheet to Google Docs, and the command and control communication moves that way. Well, we know when the application can actually send stuff and cannot send stuff, so, and we actually block it. Some people say, well, can I do that with my next-gen IPS? And certainly some some sophisticated IPSs, like ours, the Provencia one, uh, is actually very effective in detecting and preventing some of these. Not even all, but some of these. But what's the problem? That what happens when you are at home and you are downloading something and, and your machine gets infected? Well, your IPS is not protecting you. In, in, in Trustier Apex, is actually because it leads on the client, it's, it's in the client endpoint, actually moves uh, with with the uh, with the device, so so it really protects you all the time when you are behind the uh, the, the protection of your corporate enterprise and and, and, uh, and as well as when you are not. The other thing that it does very effectively is password protection. Let me quickly tell you about it about the things that we do. So many companies have a single password and have been able to. Uh, concentrate in, in, a, in a single corporate password that is good for all the applications. You do that through Active Directory. You do that with our ISAM application. You, you do that through an LDAP. Any, anyways. But, but that password is very important. So what happens when people start using that corporate password in websites that are outside the ones that the corporate has? Well, that's bad because when, when those password databases get compromised, Ah, I know these guys work for company ABC. Well, I'm going to go to that company with email address and, and log in and bingo, I, I, I get in. Uh, so one of the things that, that, that we actually do is that we have a list of the authorized. Uh, when we set the client app, this, this client, when I was talking about here, when we set the client, we, we specify the uh, URLs of the authorized sites that you can actually use the corporate password. If you try to use it in, a, in one that is not in there, the client will tell you, no, you are not supposed to use that password. We don't store, actually, the password, we store, we store a hash of it. So whenever you are entering any password field in any, in any form, uh, we actually uh, uh, compare with the, with, the, with the hash that we have. And if it's the same, we are going to prevent you from actually uh, doing that. And we also tokenize, when, we, when you enter the password, when from that keyboard, uh, keyboard driver that I told you about, uh, we tokenize that uh, those keystrokes, and we only detokenize them when the right application has the focus. And what that allows us to do is <laughs> basically, uh, uh, if you have a keylogger installed on your machine, uh, the keylogger will see garbage, will be will see tokenized, and what the application will get the right password. It's very effective. So in short, we're going to be showing in the in the next in the in the in the uh, six use cases that we'll be demoing how Trustier Apex disrupts exploits from deploying. So it's very effective, and we'll show you two specific cases uh, with Java and, and and an email attachment how how we do that. The second thing that it does is prevents data infiltration. And we're going to see sophisticated cases where we prevent those uh, that communication from going out. And the third thing, it protects corporate passwords, corporate credentials. So we're going to be showing the, those demos. And the good thing, again, about Trustier is that not only we work for the things that are happening today, but we, because we look at those finite valid state, everything else, that infinite combination of things that will keep on coming, we actually block it very effectively. So I invited you to uh, watch the, the, the demos uh, that follow.